and we are live here on starting a graphic design career. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. I have been in the graphic design industry for a little over a decade now, and I'm super stoked to have you on the channel today. I focus primarily on graphic design, whether you're getting started or trying to grow in your career. So we do a lot here for graphic design tools, tips, and really just knowledge that gets you to the point where you can get to your desired goals. So today we're talking specifically about starting a graphic design career and we'll be jumping back and forth between the slides here. Talking about today, who is this stream for specifically? So that's gonna be basically anybody interested in starting out in graphic design. Anybody who wants to go to college or be self-taught. Anybody, when are you ready to step out as a professional? So talking about, okay, so you've gone to school, or you've been self-taught now, when are you gonna step out and jump into that career? Or even how to promote yourself, deciding between freelancing or a full-time job. So really that's our main focus today, is focusing on a few of those questions to get us rolling into what you need to do to take on a graphic design career. If you're just getting on the live stream, definitely send out this to other people who you know would be interested in graphic design. Hit that like button, subscribe if you're interested, and I'd love to have you on this channel more often whenever I'm going live or just uh, posting videos on the day to day. All right, so one thing I wanna talk about quickly before we completely dive in is this video is sponsored by the Design Business Kit. You can click down in the link below to check out the Graphic Design Business Kit. This is something I've created to help designers wanting to take on a full-time freelance career, helping them automate and structure their businesses in order to grow with scalable results. So that's really the big focus of the Design Business Kit, and you can learn more about that in the description below. So is graphic design for you? That's kind of the first question I wanna kick off with. Um, graphic design is communication of ideas through visual form. And when we talk about that, a lot of times it's kind of convoluted. So what does that really mean? Well, it means that you're gonna take a message, it creates a visual stimulating arrangement of colors, typography, images, etc. I mean, that's really the basis of graphic design. From there, you really think of yourself as a visual problem solver. So how do you take somebody's type that they've written out, a photo that they've taken, and some of the colors that they wanna include within their ad, say you're creating a Facebook ad for a company, how do you arrange those in a way that's visually stimulating and is effective? So motivates that individual who that ad is being promoted to, to make the sale. So that's really a base form of understanding of, you know, what are you doing as a graphic designer? So I like to call this kind of my statement, and that is graphic design is communication, not creative confusion. Uh, a lot of times, you know, I see people try and get creative, or maybe even overly creative with graphic design, and then they just end up confusing people. And I always say artists are allowed to confuse people, but designers are not. And I don't mean that to kind of put a dig towards artists, but what I'm trying to say with that statement is that when you have an artist versus a designer, a lot of times artists are motivating people to feel a certain emotion or they are trying to communicate a certain idea. That idea doesn't always have to be very clear. It can sometimes be muddy because that might be the challenge that the artist is putting to the viewer is, okay, figure out this problem, figure out this emotional tension. What am I trying to communicate to you? Whereas designers, our goal is first and foremost to communicate clearly. 
Uh, again, if you're just jumping on the live stream, we are talking about a career in graphic design. So what does it take to get started, to then build a portfolio, to then launch out into your career? Where do you go to school? Uh, what do you do as far as building your skills? Are you self-taught? Are you college taught? That's what we're talking about today. All right, so Addis, uh, William Addison Wiggins coined the term graphic design in 1922. That's where our term graphic design originally comes from. And what he was talking about when he named our trade, he was describing the process of designing books as a combination of typesetting, illustration, and design. So that's graphic design in a nutshell. I mean, that's where the term comes from. It comes from Addison Wiggins needing to kind of coin the phrase of what he was doing back when he was creating books, setting type, so on and so forth. Now, graphic design, the computer and the Adobe Creative Suite, those two things alone have led to this mass amount of different capabilities that designers are able to do because of the computer. Before, it was a lot of cut and paste. It was a lot of you know manually writing out type, things of that nature. Now, the click of a button, you can do a full layout. That doesn't mean design has become any easier intellectually, but it has become easier physically. Um, so now we've gotten to the point where you're creating magazines, Facebook ads, movie posters, movie credits, packaging, manuals, handouts, maps, guides, and so much more. And um, that's really what's incredible about design lately is what you can do um, and the amount of different specific areas that our field reaches. So offshoots of graphic design are also motion design, web design, animation, and more. So once you really get the foundations of graphic design down, you can really take it beyond that level. But it's really important to understand that the principles of graphic design is where it all starts. So the design principles are key for you to then take your skill set and take it into a whole new arena, or so to say, an offshoot of design. But you have to start with the basics. So you have to understand how to apply color, image, shape, line, rhythm, etc. Training your eye to see and apply these elements is really where you become a professional designer. You no longer just see beautiful things. You know, you no longer are somebody who is just you know observing good design. You're somebody who can see it and then you can actually do it. And I think that's what happens a lot um, when designers get into design school is they begin to mimic or copy. You know, that's where we kind of all start. Um, and then from there, you step into kind of your original creation. But there's a lot of mimicking as the process continues. School is in, is the way in which you develop those skills. And what I mean by school is if you're doing school on your own, self-taught, or if you're going to college. There's no quick course, there's no overnight transformation. Uh, becoming a graphic designer is a long-term pursuit. Uh, and like I say here, it's not just a love for pretty things. It is understanding how to communicate clearly in a visually stimulating way. A four-year degree is a fantastic start. Um, that is where I got my start as a graphic designer, and that's what a lot of people right now are kind of thinking, okay, if I want to become a graphic designer, do I have to go to college? You know, that's a question I get a lot. Um, but each has their pros and each has their cons. That is college versus self-taught. And so the, really the question is, what works for you? What is going to be the pursuit that works best for you in a way for you to a financially, physically, and emotionally be able to become a graphic designer. Uh, my route to design education uh, was college. Um, I had no experience and I needed a crash course. I needed programs, techniques, principles, and more. And for me, the results were a solid foundation in graphic design. So this is kind of my route. So I had no experience, I needed the basics, and the result was a solid foundation. Um, a lot of times people don't understand what the road and what the, the walking path looks like to get to their ultimate goal. And that was me. You know, when I started, I really had no idea what graphic design was. I'd never heard of the Adobe Suite. Um, I, I heard of Photoshop vaguely, um, but I just didn't understand the full capabilities of what it could do. 
And so I was completely new to the industry. I liked photography and I wanted to take my photography skills to the next level. I wanted to really have my skills be able to have a vehicle on which it would be carried. And so right now I find a lot of people who know really a lot about graphic design and you are way ahead of where I was when I first got started. And so for you, pursuing a career in graphic design is a far better move than it was for me. I had no idea what design even was. Um, I started out with simply a love for photography. So after I graduated with my undergrad, um, I went for a master's degree. And you say, okay, why did you get a master's degree? Well, at that point, I needed to prepare more. Remember, I had no idea what graphic design was. I had no skills before that. And so a master's degree was my way of getting the basics covered and then stepping beyond into the pro level. And that's what my master's degree did for me. All right, so what's all this mean so far? Um, I tell you my story to simply tell you the perspective on which I'm coming from. I went to graphic design school, to college, because I knew I needed that structure. Um, People often ask me, okay, what do I need to learn to become a graphic designer? And I often say it's, it's less about finding what you need to learn and it's more about how you're gonna learn it. Um, because that's really the key. And a lot of people say, okay, well, yeah, that's why I'm here. I wanna know how to learn it. I wanna know where I need to learn it. And what happens is people ask me, self-taught or college? And I say, how motivated are you? You know, what does it take for you to go and accomplish something? Are you somebody who is very self-motivated, who can just put themselves to task, can build out a little curriculum for themselves and just go for it? Um, If that's the case, then I think self-taught might be your thing. If not, then you may be leaning towards college. Um, I personally needed structure. I mean, that's really what I saw. I needed a program to pursue and to complete because I wasn't going to be able to do it on my own. Um, a lot of times people think, okay, you know, college is just going to, I'm just going to go to college and they're just going to you know, do it for me. And I would say, well, that's not really a, it's not really your cure to laziness. It's not. Um, what it is, is it's structure. It's a pre-built plan. It's something that you can follow. And it's something for maybe less organized people, but not far less motivated. So as again, as we're going through this, share this out and hit that like button if you're finding some value here. I'm really glad to have you on board. Um, but let's continue to work through this live stream. Hang in there with me, guys. We're uh, continuing to plug through some of these slides. So like I said, laziness, it is far from an easy road going to college. It's going to take effort. It's going to take determination. And it's going to take focus. And obviously, these are things that I'm sure you know already about college in general, but definitely about design school. Um, the self-taught designer, what you need here is motivation, time, and money, and that will equal a successful self-taught education. Now, what about having a degree to get a job? This is something I get a lot. A lot of people ask me, okay, well, great, Ben. So we've talked about going to graphic design school, and the benefit to that is they create a structure for you, and at the end of it, you get a degree, which is awesome. Um, Also with that degree, you're going to have proof that you know how to work hard and you know how to finish something strong. So it's usually a four-year degree to get graphic design. Uh, I have a Bachelor of Science in graphic design. And so people ask me, okay, what about getting a job? And I say, well, in all reality, portfolio is king. In all reality, it is your portfolio that is ultimately going to get you a job. It's going to be 80% of getting the job because at the end of the day, you can go to the coolest school in the world, but if you are terrible at design and they're hiring you to be a graphic designer, well, portfolio proof is in the pudding. I mean, if you're an accountant that kind of sucks and you know you show up and you have a good resume, they don't know you're terrible until you get in there and then maybe you'll get fired six months later. But with design, the portfolio is the most intense weeding process. And so really, portfolio is king. Um, It's increasingly more attractive to be a self-taught designer these days because price point. I mean, college can be $65,000 to $250,000 in student debt that you could be collecting. You know, I'm just talking through some of these things. Some of these realities are really helping me make a decision uh, because I get questions every day on which one should I do. And that is a big hurdle for people. 
that sixty-five to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Now that's a big spread. Now we're talking like community college or you know um, more affordable private college versus uh, some of the best art schools like Cal Arts or SCAD or um, Carnegie Mellon. You know these are some art schools that are going to cost you a lot of money, and so that's one of the big reasons that people are trying to lean more towards self-taught. That's not including room, food, life, gas, car repairs, you know, kind of just everything that comes along with it. Um, so let's continue to pursue this, this self-taught designer narrative. Let's say you live at home. Um, let's say that your basics are paid for. Let's say you get a subscription to lynda.com, you get some books, you get a computer, and you get some software. If you are motivated, if you can build yourself out a curriculum, and if you want me to develop a curriculum and this is something that you would really be interested in, definitely comment below. This is something I've kind of thrown around with the idea, but I haven't fully pursued because I don't know how how much people are really interested in this. So if you're like, wow, yeah, I would totally like a curriculum to follow, then let me know in the description below. And if I get enough comments and enough yeses, I want a graphic design curriculum, I want you to create that, then I very well may make that. Um, but anyway, so you get a Linda subscription, some books, a computer, and some software, and you are really started on your way. And if you're curious about um, what I recommend and the Linda subscription and all that, head down in the description below this video and you can check that out. You can go and look at those books. Now, the books that I recommend are Thinking with Type, Grid Systems, History of Graphic Design. That is a huge book. I'm not going to lie. It's a beast, but it's very crucial. It's very helpful to helping you understand each step of the process. And um, I think it's very valuable to have. I've read through it actually a couple times. Uh, graphic Design Thinking. I love that because it really takes you into the philosophy of graphic design and what it takes to mentally consider each project uh, from not just a visual standpoint, but also from a psychology standpoint. All right, uh, Becoming a Graphic Designer and Graphic Design School. So again, links below if you're interested in any of those books. Definitely want to check those out if you're going this self-taught route. All right, Laptop. So this channel, like I said, is a channel for you to get the knowledge as well as to get the tools that you need. So I've made multiple videos about the best laptops, the best budget laptops and laptops under $1,000. So I got you covered with the laptop there as well. Links below for that. Total cost to get started, give or take a few bucks for a self-taught designer, the, looking at like the first year of what you're doing, I added up the subscription, the books, the computer, you're looking at about $2,500. Now, this is substantially different from the 65K to 250K that you were looking at to go to design school. Now, how does this work? Well, if you live at home, and I'm just throwing that out there, if you're young, if you're living at home and you can you know, talk to your parents about saying, hey, I could go to school for this price or I could stay home, build out my own curriculum and spend two years building myself a structure full time. And what I mean by full time is eight hours a day with lunch breaks, five days a week, going through the tutorials, going through the projects, creating projects, starting to develop your online portfolio and just going hard. Also, you're going to have a lot I think you're gonna have a lot less distractions if you're not kind of in a party scene. If you're, you know, if you lean towards wanting to be a partier, that's gonna alleviate a lot of those distractions. And not only can you pursue these skills, but you can choose your own projects. So a lot of times at school they're telling you what projects to do. So if you want to be simply a logo designer, but you're at school having to learn how to design ads, which you're not interested in, then you're wasting time and your skills there. So. As a self-taught designer from home, if you have that opportunity, I know many people don't. I know some people are embarrassed to say they live at home. That's just a personal issue you have to work through. I don't know. But what I'm saying is there is huge potential to learn the skills you need as a graphic designer, self-taught from home. All right, we're gonna keep moving through here. All right, so okay, so okay, Ben, what if what if I can't do that? What if I don't live at home? What if I'm 25, 26 years old? What if I have a family? What if I have three kids? Well. What can you do part time? You know, can you work at this two to three hours each evening? You know, we work eight hours a day. We got 24 hours in a day. Leaves about 16 hours left. You got seven hours for sleep, hour or so for lunch, leisure time, blah blah blah. You can probably fit in about two to three hours a day. Can you do that? So that's where we really start to break into um, what it takes to be a self-taught designer. Again, if this is something that interests you, 
you want me to build out a curriculum or something, definitely comment below about that. And that's something I will I'll look into and kind of consider doing. All right, so you finished school. We're just kind of working through this here. You finished school. Um, you're now going to graduate from college perhaps, or you're getting to the point as a self-taught designer where you are thinking of going out on your own. So how do you get ready to get a job? Let's say you want to get a job. We'll start with that scenario first. All right, so first thing you want to do is niche down. And what do I mean by that? Let's say you want to be a logo designer. Great. All right, that's pretty niche. Now, what happens is I talk to a lot of designers, and, and I've talked about this in other videos, but I'll just reiterate it here. They say, oh yeah, I'm a graphic designer. I'm super niche. I focus on you know logos. I, um, I focus on brochures, and I can also do some web design. Well, that's not niche at all. That's like so broad. It, I don't even know how broad that is. It's really broad. But what I mean by niching down is I mean, okay, you're committed to being a logo designer. Not only are you committed to being a logo designer, but you're committed to being a logo designer only for construction companies. And if you want to get like really specific, you can be a logo designer for construction companies that only lay concrete. You know, and that might be that might be a little too specific, but they have money, they're a, a quality client, um, and they could be able to pay for the work that you have. Now, that doesn't mean that you close out any other clients that come your way. I'm just saying when you start to develop your portfolio, and that's what I'm getting at, you're developing your portfolio, you want to make four to eight pieces of for a specific company, a specific niche. All right, so let's break this down a little bit farther. Make four to eight pieces within a specific niche for a specific company and do that for five to 10 companies. Now, what that's going to do is when you create your portfolio, you're going to show up to that company with one specific portfolio. And that portfolio is going to be filled with work that relates directly to that company. I'm going to backtrack a little bit just because I think I might have gone a little out of order. No, this is live, just being transparent with you, so I'm going to talk about that. So what I just explained about the construction company logos, that's more of if you want to be a freelancer. So now I'm going to talk about if you want to get a job, and then we'll loop back around to the freelancer after the fact. So if you're wanting to get a job, you find five to ten companies that you really want to work for, you look at the work that they do, you study them, and then you go and you create work that resembles or looks like what they would want to do in say future campaigns. Now I'm not saying you use their logo and you use you know all their assets and you, you literally use all their colors. I'm just saying you create work that looks like that industry and you do it really well. And so what that does is that shows the company that, hey, I can do work just like you need me to do. I'm not gonna bring an ad, you know, a Facebook ad to a company that focuses on producing magazines. That is ridiculous. So why would I go to say Home and Garden Magazine with my Facebook ads and say, hey, look, I'm a great designer. I can design Facebook ads. And they're like, well, we need a layout designer who designs magazines. That doesn't make sense. So if you're gonna go to Home and Garden, make a handful of magazine layouts, and make an entire magazine perhaps. Now you're talking niche. And so you say, okay, well, if I do that to five to 10 companies, that's a lot of work. And I would say, well, Competition is stiff. A lot of people are wanting to be graphic designers. A lot of people are wanting to pursue that creative, that creative field. And so, yeah, competition is stiff, and it's going to be a lot of work. And the one who wins is the one who stands out, and that's really what it what it boils down to. All right, so you're ready to freelance. Same thing. You're gonna want to produce a lot of work. In a specific place. I, I gave the example of the logo designer earlier, and I'll jump into that really quickly again, um, just so we can keep it clear. So, logo designer, what you want to do is get that specific niche with a create a few specific companies that resemble what you're doing, or go ahead and I know it sounds a little bit crazy, but find a few companies that maybe you could work for free for, or do some free rebrands, and say, hey, look. I rebranded your company. Would you be interested in purchasing this rebrand that I did for you? So take a company, just rebrand them completely, do it as a pet project. If you're working from home as a self-taught designer or you're going to school, take a little time, rebrand an entire company and reach out to them. Say, hey, I was just having some fun. Maybe don't say you're having fun. Well, you could say you're having fun if you have fun with it. But what you want to say is, hey, I'm working on de developing my portfolio. 
you are within the target market of what I want to focus on as a graphic designer and I redesigned your company. I was wondering if you'd be interested in taking a look. Now, be careful in how you phrase this to them because if you say, hey, I saw your company, your logo's terrible and your design sucks, um, you should hire me. Well, what if like his favorite like niece Susie did that for him? Well, you just lost a client. So you really want to come from a very respectable, very even keeled approach. You don't want to be too aggressive and too forward. You want to be more, hey, this is what I'm working on. I would love for you to take a look and see if you like what I have here. And so you want to do that to 10, 15 companies, do full scale brands. Take that, start to promote it on your social media, start to promote it on Behance, Instagram, YouTube. Well, what you can do with YouTube is you can create videos and kind of do like digital walkthroughs and talk about your thought process. That's a whole other video I'm going to do on that because I think that'd be a golden SEO opportunity as well as really a good visual brand study. We're going to talk about that later. Cool. I appreciate those notes, by the way, and those comments. I'll get to y'all in just a minute. Um, thanks for being on here today. Um, but anyway, yeah, so what you want to do is take that and build out those brands and then communicate to your target market what you're doing. All right, so we're going to keep moving forward here. I don't want to get stuck too much in the rut. Now, if you're a freelancer, this is something I'm going to throw out there. The design business kit is an opportunity for you to take what I've learned over the past decade and get it to into your company without all the headaches of all the learning. So what I did is I took the learning of structuring a business as far as automating processes, getting project management set up, getting contracts signed, email communication, just all the ins and outs of business, and I packed it into one course, and it gives you the opportunity to learn that far faster than all the things I've done and the mistakes that I've made throughout the year. So definitely want to check that out. It's in the description below. Um, I know uh, Savage is actually commenting on that. He sent me an email, and I, I will get back to you. It's been a pretty crazy week, but I'll definitely get back to you on that. All right, we're going to keep moving through here. So promoting yourself. So what do you want to do as far as promoting yourself? You've picked a niche. You've really decided what you want to focus on as a graphic designer. Now it's time to pick a platform. And this is something I talk about in the design business kit. So picking a platform is really crucial because you want to spend 80% of your time on a platform that you really enjoy and you know your target market is on. Then you want to take the other 20% of your time and go for relevant platforms that relate and you know your target market will be on but are just not your main focus. Because if one of those other platforms pops, then you want to be there. You want to be present. But you don't want to be splitting your time so much that you basically are just spending time on social media and not actually designing. So spend 80% of your time on, say, Instagram, or spend 80% of your time on Behance, or whatever that platform is, and then repurpose that content and send it out to the other platforms with the 20% lies. And so that is really my biggest tip um, kind of at a high level. I've made other videos about that. You're welcome to go onto the channel, check them out, or get the graphic design business kit and it'll get you started on that. Um, another thing that I really, really push people is stick with it. You got to play the long game. Uh, a career in graphic design is not just learning some skills and that's it. I, I consider it a practice, practicing graphic designers. Um, we never quite have it nailed down. Um, so you never finish learning. You never give up. You keep striving for it and you keep pushing each and every day. Um, eyes on the horizon. That's one thing that I wish I would have done a little bit more when I was in school. Um, I went to school and primarily learned print design. And right as I graduated was at really that transitional phase between print design and digital fully taking over. So I'm in school, you know, my space is just finishing off. Don't miss out on what's going on right now. Don't miss out on what is currently coming up in the future of your field. So where is the attention in the culture? That is super important. Uh, one of my digital mentors who I kind of look to for keeping the eyes on the horizon is Gary Vee. And he always says, I don't care what's, I don't really care about the platform. What I care about is where people's attention is. And that is going to be the power of graphic design is having your eyes, having your focus on attention. All right. So once again, graphic design business kit in the description below. Always doing a shout out for that. I know, shameless shout out here. Uh, but I'm going to finish off with a quote from Thomas Edison, and that is, the three great essentials to achieve anything worthwhile are hard work, stick-to-itiveness, and common sense. 
So with those three, you can and will be a successful graphic designer because there will come a point when your hard work, your stick to and some good common sense will pay off. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow, but it does pay off. And I've seen that in my own career. Um, so that's it. That's all I have really today for getting started with a career in graphic design. Um, I appreciate you saying something about that, Jesus, about uh, the graphic design curriculum being helpful. Um, I will definitely look into what I can do as far as that and what that looks like to create an actual course that isn't so much fully in depth on like, okay, click here, click here, but taking you guys on a path to the right resources. And so I'm going to wait to see if I get a few more comments on that once the replay comes back for this live stream. We're going to post it up there and uh, we'll see if anybody else pipes in on that. Um, but I really appreciate you saying that. And also, Savage, I uh, definitely got your email. Like I said, I've been a little bit busy and uh, I will definitely get back to that. So I'm thinking I'm going to do something like get you the course, get some reviews, stuff like that. I am Jesse. Appreciate you hopping on here. Ali, uh, Mohan, if y'all uh, came in late, I see I'm Jesse just popped in. You can watch the replay after it processes. I'm Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com. I'm so grateful that y'all came on today. And uh, I will see you guys on the next episode. Get this restarted here. All right. See y'all later.